Hello, and welcome to the Catholic Mama podcast. I'm your host, Christine Flynn. Thanks for joining me on this week's mini episode of Catechism Fridays. We're going to jump right in. We've been talking about grace and justification. We're going to finish off this section of the catechism with Christian holiness and just a brief overview of what we've already talked about, and then move on um, to, let me see, it's a beautiful title, the church, mother and teacher. I like that. Um, And that's part of, um, uh, we'll talk about the moral life and the magisterium of the church next time. But this time, we're going to start in paragraph 2012 and talk about Christian holiness. Okay, so this is from the letter to the Romans. We know that in everything, God works for good with those who love him. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son in order that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. All Christians in any state or walk of life are called to the fullness of Christian life and to the perfection of charity. All are called to holiness. Be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. Now, Mother Angelica said, if you've got two legs and you're breathing, you're called to holiness or something like that. (laughs) Yeah, you're called to holiness. It doesn't matter who you are. You are called to holiness. So um, uh, here we read, in order to reach this perfection, the faithful should use the strength dealt out to them by Christ's gift so that doing the will of the father in everything, they may wholeheartedly devote themselves to the glory of God and to the service of their neighbor. Thus, the holiness of the people of God will grow in fruitful abundance as it clearly shown in the history of the church through the lives of so many saints. Spiritual progress tends toward ever more intimate union with Christ. This union is called mystical because it participates in the mystery of Christ through the sacraments, the holy mysteries, and in him, the mystery of the Holy Trinity. God calls us all to this intimate union with him, even if the special graces or extraordinary signs of this mystical life are granted only to some for the sake of manifesting the gratuitous gift given to all. The way of perfection passes by way of the cross. There is no holiness without renunciation and spiritual battle. Spiritual progress entails the mortification that gradually leads to living in peace and joy of the Beatitudes. The children of our Holy Mother, the church, rightly hope for the grace of final perseverance and the recompense of God, their father, for the good works accomplished with his grace in communion with Jesus. Keeping the same rule of life, believers share the blessed hope of those um, whom the divine mercy gathers into the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Beautiful. So the grace of the Holy Spirit confers upon us the righteousness of God, uniting us by faith and baptism to the passion and resurrection of Christ. The Spirit makes us shares in this life. Justification includes the remission of sins, sanctification, and the renewal of the inner man, and is merited to us by the passion. Um, Sanctifying grace is the gratuitous gift of his life that God makes to us. It is infused by the Holy Spirit into the soul to heal it of sin and to sanctify it. And finally, all Christians are called to the fullness of Christian life and to the perfection of charity. If any man would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. All right. Thanks so much for joining me on this one. Subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. We'll talk about the church and the magisterium next time. All right, everyone. Until then.